Hello, my name is Purvi Parvani and I'm a cardiovascular advanced imager and a cardiologist at Loma Linda University Health, Loma Linda, Southern California, United States. And today I've selected three trials from European Society of Cardiology meeting uh, 2022 uh, to discuss with all of you. The first trial I have selected is called the Dan Kevas trial that describes the five-year outcomes of the Danish cardiovascular screening registry. In this trial, 46,000 men aged 65 to 74 in Denmark were invited to randomize to comprehensive screening for subclinical cardiovascular disease or no screening in one to two randomization session and were followed for cardiovascular outcome with a median of uh, 5.6 years follow-up. Now this screening included non-contrast uh, electrocardiographic gated computerized tomography to determine the calcium artery, uh, sorry, coronary artery calcium score, and also to detect the aneurysms and uh, atrial fibrillation, um, and uh, ankle brachial blood pressure measurement to detect the peripheral vascular disease and hypertension, and a blood sample to detect diabetes mellitus and hypercholesteremia. The baseline characteristics and medic medications were balanced in both groups, and target enrollment was achieved in, uh, with almost 13.1% all-cause mortality in a control group after the median follow-up of 5.6 years. Now, the primary outcome here was death from any cause. Almost 10,000 men in the invited group uh, underwent screening, um, and that this counted for almost 63% of the patients. In, in intention to treat analysis after a median follow-up of 5.6 years, Almost 13% uh, men in the invited group and 13% in the control group had died, so no significant reduction in primary outcome was achieved. Here, the hazard ratio of 0.95 and uh, the confidence interval was 0.921. And a, but in a pre-specified analysis, 11% reduction in primary outcomes was achieved in men um, in between age uh, 65 and 70. Um, also, in this study, there was a greater uptake of antiplatelet and lipid-lowering medicine that was seen in the screening arm. However, there was no difference in use of anticoagulation, antihypertensive and diabetic drugs or in coronary or aortic revascularization. Now, if we look at the cost effectiveness, this study had comparable uh, screening cost effectiveness ratio per Cali. Um, as comparable to uh, the best, uh, be breast cancer screening. In the study, although it was very important for cardiovascular prevention strategy, particularly given the benefit of increasing use of medications that we have seen with other CT trials as well, in the screening group, um, it lacked a comparative, comparative group for CAC imaging, and it did raise some serious ethical concern having uh, enrolled no woman whatsoever. The trialists across the world have really called upon an action by the funding agency to, fund, to not fund studies um, with any sex-based eligibility criteria, given that the cardiovascular disease remains the number one cause of death for both the sex. The second trial that I have selected is called the DELIVER trial. Um, DELIVER trial is dapagliflozin and heart failure with mildly reduced or preserved ejection fraction um, this was presented along with several other studies that showed that SGLT2 inhibitors provide benefit to patients with heart failure irrespective of the ejection fraction. Now in this trial, they almost enrolled 63, uh, sorry, 6,200 uh, 6, patients with mean age of uh, 72 years and 44% um, women. Um, these patients were randomized to dapagliflozin 10 milligram once a day or placebo on top of usual therapy and they were followed for almost median of uh, 2.3 years during which time dapagliflozin uh, reduced the rate of cardiovascular uh, death or worsening heart failure with a number needed to treat of 32. Now these results demonstrated of course the significant reduction in primary composite out, uh, endpoint of cardiovascular death or worsening heart failure over the median follow-up of 2.3 uh, years. Uh, the rate uh, was 16.4 uh, uh, among the patients with mildly reduced or preserved EF um, that are treated with dapagliflozin versus 19.5 um, in the patients who received, received placebo. Importantly, the LV uh, ejection fraction did not influence the result of this trial 
and the effect of the medicine did not differ uh, in the patients uh, with ejection fraction above or below 60 percent. This is very relevant given that the Emperor Preserve trial had shown decreasing benefit of SGLT2 inhibitors with higher end of LBEF. This trial showed consistent benefit in every pre-specified group uh, with strong evidence to support SGLT2 inhibitor in uh, patients with heart failure regardless of ejection fraction, age, sex or presence of diabetes mellitus. During the discussion of the trial, it was suggested, suggested by the discussants that uh, these results can truly impact the guidelines um, and, and perhaps this group of medicine um, will receive a class 1 indication uh, regardless of the ejection fraction. The third trial that I have selected is called the SECURE trial, also known as Secondary Prevention of Cardiovascular Disease in Elderly. This is an open-label trial that was conducted in 113 hospitals and involved al almost 1,500 European patients with a mean age of 76 years. 31% of these patients were women. And all these patients had a recent type 1 MI within the last six months. But the median time between the index MI and randomization was uh, eight days. The baseline group had uh, systolic blood pressure, mean systolic blood pressure of uh, 129 and LDL value of 89 milligrams per deciliter. The poly pill um, that was used in this trial that included 100 milligrams of aspirin, 2.5, 5 or 10 milligrams of ramipril, and 20 or 40 milligrams of otovastatin. Now the physicians had the option of reducing the statin dose to 20 milligrams based on the patient's history or blood test results almost 92 percent of the patients in this trial received the higher dose of statin which was 40 milligrams of atovastatin. The dose of ACE inhibitor was also started at 2.5 milligrams of ramipril uh, in patients that were ACE naive and was gradually increased to 10 milligrams. Almost 40 percent of the patients received ramipril 2.5 Aspirin 100 milligrams and atovastatin 40 milligrams, um, and almost 95 percent of the patients, both in um, both in both the arms, received an additional antiplatelet medicine, and 80 percent were also on the beta blockers. <clears throat> the primary outcome of uh, this trial was cardiovascular death, non-fatal type 1 myocardial infarction, ischemic stroke, or urgent revascularization. As expected, adherence at six months was significantly better in the polypoil arm and this remained consistently well even at two years. What was surprising though that even though there was no significant difference in systolic or diastolic blood pressure between the two study arm or there was no difference in the mean LDL level between the two arms, the treatment with polypill resulted in significantly lower risk of major cardiovascular events compared to the usual care. Now the benefit of polypill was also again consistent across all the age, uh, all the subgroups including uh, subgroups uh, stratified by age, sex, uh, CKD, uh, prior revascularization or diabetes mellitus. Now the adherence to treatment of course can explain some of the reduction in the clinical outcomes. Uh, however, uh, there was no reduction in the blood pressure or LDL arm. Um, uh, between the two groups which was uh, truly surprising and the you know the lead investigators here have speculated that it might be explained by the pleiotropic effect of ACE inhibitors or statins which were used uh, widely in this um, in this study or perhaps the aspirin um, in this polypill even though the previous benefit uh, with aspirin in clinical trial uh, has not shown um, the benefit uh, to a large extent as it was shown on the secure trial. Now this study did have some limitations given it was an open label design and it was also underpowered, uh, a bit underpowered given uh, the COVID-19 pandemic. However, um, it, it adds to the data that we have seen previously even with polypill in this case uh, in patients um, that had uh, type 1 MI in last six months. So with this, I would like to conclude this video. Thank you so much for listening to me.